Hello everybody, this is Adam Savage from Tested.com. I am really excited about the video you are about to watch by my friend Daryl Maloney. Um, you might know Daryl uh, from his prolific work that he tweets and Instagrams under the uh, moniker, The Broken Nerd. Uh, and Daryl came to my attention last year because he, He's ludicrously prolific and incredibly facile at 3D printing and model making uh, and ambitious in his scope. Uh, and Daryl and I worked together on a pair of Knights of Ren costumes for this year's Silicon Valley Comic Con, which you can probably see on the on this side of the this webpage right now. <laughs> <laughs> in the list of videos that you might be interested in. Um, in our ongoing collaboration, uh, Daryl will continue to deliver some videos for Tested.com, including this one, in which I commissioned Daryl to make a space helmet for me. Specifically, I am working on replicating the orange uh, shuttle suits known as the pumpkin suits or aces suit. Uh, and Daryl has been 3D printing the helmets. He started from a model I actually bought from a company that sells digital models. I paid a couple hundred bucks for a really nice, uh, high fidelity model of the Shuttle Aces helmet with its two distinctive visors. And Daryl took that file that I bought and used his expertise to convert it to be uh, uh, usable as a 3D printing file. And well, I, I won't spoil any of the specifics about what he went through and how he did it, because that's what this video is about. Please enjoy my friend, Daryl Maloney, the broken nerd, making some space helmets. Hey everyone, my name is Daryl and I am the broken nerd. So I'm here today because Adam has commissioned me to 3D print a uh, space helmet for him. And the space helmet that I am going to be printing for him is the US Advance Escape Crew helmet. Adam has purchased this helmet offline and right now I'm going to show you how I am going to take this file and clean it up for 3D print. Uh, the original intent for this model wasn't for 3D printing, it was for rendering purposes. I have to take that file and bring it into Cinema 4D, which the file was created in, and clean it up so that we can export it out as an STL and have a good file that's ready for print. So I'm gonna walk you guys through that process. Yeah, so let's take a look. So right now we have our model in the actual um, program. And the program that I'm using is Cinema 4D and so we're gonna start by cleaning up this model. So I already did some pre-work. I already um, pulled the model into the program, took off all the textures, and scaled it up because when I brought the model in, it brought it in in centimeters, but it's best to work in millimeters um, when 3D printing because that translates across to the actual, actual slicing program. And how I scaled it up is Adam was so kind enough to send over some measurements pull those up and the out the neck ring outer di uh, dimension is 11 inches and the inner diameter inner diameter is 9.9 .9. so what uh, I did was I took a cube and scaled it to those two dimensions but I converted it into millimeters and I scaled the helmet to match these uh, two cubes um, before we get started let's go ahead and make a copy of the helmet and we will uh, name this one backup so this way if we happen to delete anything that we weren't supposed to delete or we have something that um, that we need to fix or we missed we have a backup file in the program so this way we can go back to that and I, it's also a good point of reference for me if I need to look at the helmet I have some reference pictures, but it always it's always good to have a backup within your work area. So this way, if you do delete anything or anything goes wrong, you have that option. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start checking the helmet to see where our problem areas are. And how we do that is I'm going to hit Shift M on the keyboard and it's going to bring up the model settings. And I want to make sure that the mesh checking tab is checked. And I already pre-did this but we want to make sure that enable mesh check is on and there's two things that we're going to be looking for we're going to be looking for non manifolds and boundary edges and uh, just to explain what those are boundary edges are any area of the model that's open so if it has a hole in it or it's not um, seen together and that will be highlighted by a green line 
non-manifolds are a polygon laying on top of a polygon, which we do not want because the program, slicing program will misread that and then it'll print weird. I've had prints print inside out because of one little non-manifold and that will be highlighted in red. And those are the most important ones that we want to make sure that are not, that, that are not in the model and that we correct those. So those are already on and as you can see on my screen, we don't see any now, but once I start going through and selecting items, we'll start seeing that, as you can see here, this is not closed off. There's no thickness to the model, so therefore it's not closed off, therefore we have um, boundary edges. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna work on the, the helmet, not the visor or the other bits and pieces, we're just gonna work on the helmet itself and get that ready for 3D print. So I want to separate that out from all of this and I believe it is the helmet. So we're going to pull this out and then we're going to hide everything else. So as you can see there is a bunch of areas that we need to fix. But right now we're just going to concentrate on the helmet, the neck ring and then this outer portion here. So what we need to do is we need to separate all these parts and then bring everything back in as one piece. I know I want the neck ring, so we're gonna work on the neck ring first. So I'm gonna hit UF, and we're gonna select the, U, the neck ring, and then um, split it, and that separates it from the model. Here's the area that I need to clean up. So we need to close this area off, so that this way, um, when it's printing, we'll have infill that's printing in here. So we're gonna go ahead and close this off. And it's really simple how we can do this in Cinema 4D. We will go ahead and select this outer line and these two outer lines. And I'm gonna right click, sew and stitch. I'm gonna hold shift and up. And there we are. So we have our piece closed. And then now I want to concentrate on the shell. So we're gonna separate the shell out from the base. All right. so. For this, we cannot close this because we want this area to be open um, because of course we have to see out the helmet. Once I increase the thickness of the helmet, you see that the green lines go away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna command all, right click, extrude. So I'm gonna extrude in and automatically see that it went away. We're done with, we're done with cleaning this part of the helmet up, but Another thing that we have to take into account is when we export this out as an STL file, it doesn't, it's not as smooth because an STL file removes the font tag off of the, um, the helmet and the font tag kind of gives us that smoothness that we see on the screen now. But if I take it away, we'll see that there's a lot of, um, hard edges and hard squared polygon shapes to the helmet. So what we want to do is we want to subdivide this to make it smooth again. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my subdivision surface and drop the shell into that. And as you can see, we have a much smoother helmet. All right, so the next area that I'm gonna concentrate on is the outer border of the helmet. And so again, we see where our problem areas are at. So it is this area here, this open space needs to be closed up. And again, we'll do the same process we right click, select this ring, select this line, right click, go stitch, shift and drag across and we have closed up that open area. So now we have our three pieces that are ready for print. But what we need to do is make this one piece. Right now they're three separate pieces and I want to print this in one entire piece. And if I send this to the printer now as is, it's not going to read it as one piece. So we need to union these three pieces together. Now this is where Mesh Mixer may play a role because um, sometimes Cinema 4D is not powerful enough to um, mend things together or even boolean which is to cut into another object but we'll see how it goes first and then if not we'll jump into mesh mixer and see how that uh, how it does in there all right so I'm gonna start off by bringing the shell and the ring together first and see how that goes 
Um, we're going to use the bool tool. We want to make sure that union is on, create a single object, and we just want to drop those into the boolean tool. And we'll just give it a minute to work itself out. Okay, so I, I'm assuming because there's so many polygons that Cinema 4D can't handle the union of these objects. So right now I'm going to jump into Mesh Mixer and um, pull those objects in and then see if we can union them. So right now what I have up is um, Autodesk mesh, mesh, mesh Mixer. But first I want to export these objects out as an STL and then bring them into Mesh Mixer so we can go ahead and union them. All right, so I'm going to select both items and then hit Boolean Union and then let it work itself out. And hopefully with some luck, it will union and we'll have the helmet attached to the neck ring. All right, so I jumped ahead just a little bit and because it took a while, I went ahead and um, unioned everything. So now we have the helmet and it's in one um, piece. So we can print this as is, but there's areas of the helmet that I spoke to Adam about that we're gonna go ahead and pre-cut some holes into it. So I kind of jumped ahead a little bit and did that pre-work already. So here's the model that is all prepared for printing. And right now we just have some pre-cut holes in it. And this is the area where the visors connect that we have, um, that we have cut holes into. And then we've also uh, cut some pre-holes for screws for the bolts to go into in areas where there's parts that need to be connected inside of the helmet. And these are more reference points than anything. Um, for Adam, when he gets the helmet, he knows where he can screw it in, screw in those bolts on the interior of the helmet. As it stands, this helmet is ready for print. After pre-cutting the holes into the shell, we can go ahead and pull this into our slicing program and start, get, start getting it ready to be sliced and then send it to the printer. So let's go ahead and send this to our slicing program. All right, so I have the slicing program opened up. It's called Simplify 3D and I'm printing this on my CR10. Um, CR10 has a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter printing volume. So we're gonna be able to print this helmet in one shot. The biggest thing is supports. So I'm gonna try and avoid using a lot of support which will use utilize a lot of material and I'm going to be printing this in PLA so in order to save on printing time and um, material I'm going to cut out some of the supports that would be printed in the middle of the helmet so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit customize support structure and then we are going to generate automatic supports so all the dark orange areas are supports and we do not want all of this to um, print. We want to leave these outside borders here, these outside supports here, the outside supports along the, the neck ring, but we want to take all this out. And unfortunately, um, we're going to have to do that one by one. So I'm going to start that process and then come back when I'm done with it. All right, so here is the helmet. I removed all of the support material in the middle and I have left some support material in the back here and left some support in the front here just to kind of support this part of the, uh, the ring, the upper part of the ring of the helmet. We are ready for the program to slice it and we're just gonna go ahead and hit prepare to print. And we'll give this a minute to slice the helmet and produce a G-code for us. And then we'll place that G-code on a flash drive and then we'll go ahead and plug that up to the printer and then start the printing process. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and export this, send this to the printer, get it started. And then when I come back, we'll have a finished helmet. So I'll see you guys when this is all done and printed. Hey guys, it's been about 72 hours since I put the helmet to print and um, had a few hiccups, but I just wanted to show you this is the helmet. 
um, that we fixed and printed on the CR10. So all in all, this took about 72 hours to print, um, but I did have a few hiccups and I'm gonna kind of uh, walk through what happened on the printer. Um, one thing with 3D printing, it's never guaranteed what's gonna happen once you get it on the print bed. The first layers can go down fine, but there's always an, uh, a possibility that you have an issue on the bed and it doesn't matter how far you get into the print there's always that possibility that you run into a problem so i'm going to talk about the issues that i had so the first issue that i had is that i trusted the software too much usually when i put an object into the software that's too big for the bed platform it usually tells me that it's too big it says the this object exceeds the build volume um but in this particular case it did not tell me that and i assumed that it would be all right and I did notice that the back of the helmet kind of came out over the bed. But again, I was looking for the program to tell me that the helmet was too big, but it didn't. So I noticed about 10 to 12 hours into the print that it started to shift forward. I thought maybe it was something that was going wrong with my printer. So I stopped the print and then restarted it and then paid attention to the neck to the other one that I had printing. This one, as you can see, it's starting to come up on an angle, but it's supposed to curve and come around and because this item was too big for the print bed the printer was correcting itself because the nozzle couldn't come back far enough to get the curve that exceeded the print bed the printer started correcting itself and it started pushing every it started shifting all the layers forward and obviously i couldn't print it like this and i didn't i thought again i thought it was something that was going wrong with my printer um and not until i noticed that the second helmet that I was printing was doing the exact same thing, but this one had a greater shift. So I stopped both of them and both of them were 29 hours into the print. So I had to stop these and then restart it. So what I did was in the slicing program, I tilted the helmet on a slight angle. So this way um, we can fit the entire helmet on the print bed and not have to slice it in order to print it. It did increase the print time and it did increase the support materials that were needed but I rather had printed it in one shot versus having to slice the helmet up and then having Adam having to glue it back together. About 52 hours in, the second helmet that I was printing, um, this is totally circumstantial and I've had this happen to me before. So the filament roll wrapped around itself and because it wrapped around itself, there was so much tension on the filament line that it popped the line going into my printer and therefore it wasn't printing anything so when i came outside the nozzle was like this far off the print because the printer thought it was still printing itself it's just that it was like 52 hours into the print and then this happened so i had to stop this print and luckily enough i was able to go ahead and print this one so all in all um i have about 114 hours of print time this one took a whole roll and some more on the top just to finish this so i really babysitted this one so i'm gonna go ahead and start the process of printing another helmet so with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video i do have a lot more pieces to print i'm gonna do a combination of prints uh for printing these parts for the helmet for some of the bigger pieces i'm gonna use pla and use that on a regular 3d printer and then for some of the smaller intricate pieces i'm gonna print that on the sla printer which uses resin so hopefully i'll get these parts printed and we won't have any more for the issues from here thank you for tuning in see you next time